We begin actually on the second Amud. The first Amud is the shortest Amud in Shas with actual Gemara on it. There is a Amud in Nedarm that has no Gemara on it. But this one has only two lines, and we've already learned those two lines as part of our last stuff. So we're starting a few lines into Ayin Zayin Amid Vez. The Gemara is discussing Mulchekis between Revech and Rishlokish, trying to explain Pshat and Reb Shimon. Reb Shimon had said that you can be Chayev Dalad Vehei for Shechting a carbon of Kachim, but on the other hand, he also says that Shechita Shein Aruya, you can't be Chayev, or if it's a Puzzle Shechita. So the Gemara had been trying to figure out what is the case of where you were makdish it, and yet it's a shechit ruya. So Rabbi Yechanan had said that it was tmimim inside the Beis Hamikdash, inside the Azar, and it's being shechted as a valid carbon. And we're talking about a balmum, and it's outside the Beis Hamikdash. So the Gemara now wants to know why did each one not want to say like the other. So the Gemara says, I understand why Rabbi Yechanan didn't want to say like Rishon and Lakish. He didn't want to limit the Mishnah to a case of a balmum. He wanted to talk even about a tam, and therefore he said it could be a tam inside the Beis Hamikdash. Why did Rish Lakish not want to say that? Why did he have a problem with saying that it's inside the Bismiglash and it's a Tam? Skumar answers because he has a drasha, Tvach and Mechare, Tvich and Mechare have to go together, and they have to be which each situation can only be practicable for the other situation as well. Mechira has to be in a situation where you could have done Tvicha, and Tvich has to be in a situation where you could have done Mechira. Kachim cannot be sold. So a uh, Kachim that is a Tam cannot be sold. The mechira is not chal. It doesn't become chulin. And therefore the sale is not chal. The only way that you can sell kachim is if it's a balmum. So the mechira of kachim has to be talking about a balmum. So the tefichah should also be talking about a balmum. So we're dafka talking about a balmum outside the base of Megdash. So the Gemara says we've just established a new mechag of and Yechanan and, and Reish Lakish, that is, a tvicha in a situation where you couldn't sell it, or a sale in a situation where you couldn't do a valid shechita, does that work? Is that mechayv you the dal or not? So the Gemara says, we've seen this mechaykes. We see it in a situation of somebody who sold a trefa, an animal that's treif. According to Rabbi Shimon's opinion, it's the, it's impossible to do a kasher shechita, be a shechita shein aruya. So, so tvicha doesn't apply. The question is, if you sell it, does that mechira mechayv you the Dalad of the Rav Yechanan says yes, because even though you can't do a Tvicha, you could do Mechira, you don't, it, one works in a situation where the other one would not. Rav says, like we just said, no, either one can only work in a situation where the other works. Here, since the Tvicha would not be Mechayev you, the Dalad of even if you sell this Trefa, it's not Mechayev you, the Dalad of So now, in this Mechayegis, Rav Yechanan brings the right against Rav Yechanan. Rav Yechanan has two cases. We'll focus on the Raya will be from the second case. First case is if someone steals Kelayim, he steals an animal that has one parent that is a sheep and one is a goat. And then he shechts that. Or second case is that he steals a treva, just exactly our case. He steals a treva and he sells that. So he's chay of the dal So you see clearly that if he steals a treva and sells it, he's chay of the dal so says the Gemara, Pasha says that this is Rabbi Shimon, and even though you wouldn't be chay for shechita of a treifa, because it's shechita shenaru, you're coming to Rabbi Shimon, and it's not mechay of you, still, you chay for the dalid vehei if you sell it. Obviously, it doesn't matter that you couldn't do shechita, the mechir you chay for. On that, the Gemara responds, if it's Rabbanan, why are we mechay between tvich and mechira? What's the difference? The Rabbanan hold that you can shecht or sell a treifa, and they are the same halacha. So obviously it must be Reb Shimon, and the chiddish, and it's only mechira you could do, but shchid you can't do. The Gemara says, no. Um, it's, Reb Sh- it's really the Rabbanan, and you could do tvicha or mechira, you for both of them, and I mentioned one of the two. And, and that's not fair, because if you look at the case of Kilayim, the Reisha, the first case, there it said that you stole Kilayim and you shechted it, what's the significance of Shechita? Shechita, you're chayef or mechir, you're not. There's no difference as far as Kilayim is concerned. And therefore, it said one of the two, but you chayef for both. So here also, it's Rabbanan. It said one of the two, you chayef for both, both for Tvicha and for Mechira. So on that, if Yechim responds, he says, no, I still have a Raya. Because it makes sense that they said one of the two, if there was a reason to say one of the two, in at least one of the cases. So in the case in the Seifa, if it was Reb Shimon, and you can only talk about 
mechira, because tvichli be patafor, because it's a shchita shenir ruya. So I understand, since in the safe we have to say one of the two, the ratio also said one of the two. That makes sense. However, according to you, both the Reisha and the Seifa could have said both of them. You should just say the entire thing is one simple Abraisa. It should have said, if you stole Kilaim or Trefa and you shechted or you slo- and you shechted or you sold it, mix it all together because everything applies it to everything. And therefore, the fact that we didn't say the Abraisa simply like that is still a Kasha. The Gemara concludes, Kasha. Okay, now the Gemara wants to learn the Abraisa more in depth, the Brisa said that you you're chay for kilayim, you're chay for the shchit of kilayim. So Gemara asks, the pasuk says clearly, or at least we should have a drasha that you're not chay for kilayim. It says a se, a se. Rava said elsewhere, you make a binyan av is always memayet kilayim. Um, anytime it says se, it's to exclude kilayim. And therefore, this should include kelaim as well. Again, kelaim has to be from a sheep and a goat. So it should exclude kelaim here. So the verse says no, because it says oi, shar oise, and that extra oi is to include kelaim. So the asks, but oi is not usually to include kelaim. Oi we've seen elsewhere is to exclude kelaim. The Gemara brings from the um, parsha which we lay in at the beginning of um, Parsha's Emar, where it says shar oi kesev oi eiz. And we have a brace that says shor oy kesev, that oy is to exclude kelaim. Oy eis, that is to exclude a nidme, which is an animal who is born from one min and looks like a different min. So if a sheep gives birth to a goat. So you see, or is excluding. So Rav says it depends on context. Each one depends on the context that it's in. By Geneva, where it says shor oy se, you can't get a kelaim out of a shor or a se. So what is the oi for then? It's to include kelaim, because I would not have otherwise assumed kelaim, because it doesn't say kelaim. So extra oi is to include, it's referring to a situation where there is no kelaim. You can't make a climb out of those two. So obviously it's to include a kelaim of something else. However, by Kachin, where it says kesev and aids, you could make kelaim from them. So on my own, I would have assumed the kelaim of the two was just as good as either one. And therefore the oi is to exclude kelaim. On that, the Gemara asks, but it says Shari Kesev there also. Shari Kesev, you can't bring Kelayim from them, and therefore it must be a reboy when it says Oi to include Kelayim, which I would not have said on my own. So it says no, but the other Oi of, sh- of, of Kesev A's, that we already said is a Miet. So if that one's a Miet, this one's also a Miet. So it says no, well, maybe the opposite should be true, because this one's a reboy, the other one's also a reboy. How do you know which way to go? As we know, having two meats makes sense. One would be to be Mamayat Kelayim, and one would be to Mamayat the Nidme, which is not real Kelayim. It's much more likely to be included because it was no illegal marriage that happened there. It was just a, a sheep gave birth to a goat. However, if you want to say it's two Ribuim, two inclusions, why would you need to include two things? Once I include Kelayim, Kav I can include Nidme, and therefore we're not going to learn it that way.